Hey, welcome. This is Patrick Dewar. I've got two of my best friends and uh, what I call gurus in the speaking industry on the on the webinar tonight with me, Scott Barholt, the infamous magician of all things accounting and marketing. Uh, Scott, say hi and tell us a little bit about you real quick. Hey, Scott Barholt here sitting in Zanesville, Ohio. Uh, on a run working with sales and use tax, uh, teaching people how to become better prepared and build their businesses a little bit better. So that's that's what I got. That's that's awesome. And then I have Ojinga Carr, Mr. Structure, the uh, idea guy, I should say. And IDEA stands for I D I A, is that correct? Stands it's for it's Andre Maya and I so, agree. Yeah, I achieve. Absolutely. You're a guru in that. Tell me about you real quick. I want to get into that, and then we'll talk more. So I'm excited. I'm here in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. I'm on, I'm on a run working with hundreds of business leaders on how it is they can structure their business better. I'm a certified high-performance coach, and so I work with people to be able to figure out. I don't help them with their with their why or their or their what. I help them with their how, and so how, how they're going to be able to get things done. That is awesome. And and I'm Pat Dewar. I'm here in uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas. Or no, Fayetteville. That's right. It's North Carolina. They got a fun Fayetteville's. And, uh, and I'm working with clients to help them understand how to speak the language of the folks that they are working with or their customers. That's one of the things that a lot of us look at when we get into to business. We're trying to grow our business. We get more and more task oriented as leaders. And then what do we do? We get so task oriented that we drop anchor on funometer and nisometer. Somebody comes up to us and says, hey, you got a minute. You're like, no. And these flames come out and that employee is reduced to ash and then you're in trouble and you get sent to a class to straighten you out. Well, that's kind of what we're trying to do is encourage people to recognize, yes, there are languages, language patterns that people have. But on today's class, what I want to expand on that, because that's usually where most, most people stop, is they think about the platinum rule that there are, uh, you know, it's the old speak, treat other people the way they want you to treat them. But you'll find out that I have a reason why I reduce that down to about three words, speak their language. Well, when we get into strength-based leadership, which this component of our little uh, uh, resource that we're building here is going to be about how do we recognize the strengths that leaders have and that employees have, and how can I develop those strengths? How can I develop a what I call a mentoring platform and plan for developing my people in the area that they'll never get tired? They literally will thrive in that area and then using the language patterns to speak their language, to build them up, to develop them, mentor them, coach them into the destiny that you so want and they so want in their life. So I'm so grateful to have my two buddies on the line. They're extremely successful uh, speakers throughout the country. Both are, are, all three of us are national speakers. I'm so grateful to be able to run with uh, a group of leaders like I have right here on the line. You guys are going to get a lot of a lot of value out of this. Now, you know, so on the screen you're looking at here's the truth you need to know about strength-based leadership. Strength-based leadership is the ability to see the internal motivational gift that a person has that they excel in. They actually derive a form of what I call their source energy to really thrive in their life. It's that area that they they really don't get tired of doing because it's so easy. It's, you know, some people would call it God-given. It's you are born with this. Some of these you can develop, but many of us, if we'll just identify, just identify one thing that could shift our energy, shift our passion, mix it with our profession and create our destiny, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Well, that's what this, this 
uh, webinar, that's what this this training, that's what we're birthing is the ability to really bring people into a, a the ability to create their own destiny. And so I'm so excited uh, uh, about that. Now a little bit about me, just so that you know, you know, about 14 years ago, I was in corporate America and, and I had the um, unique experience where I, I was invited to sit down with my manager and, and, and the gist of the conversation went like this, Pat, you're really good at what you do. And, and we would love to raise you into management, but <laughs> you suck with people. I mean, seriously, like, people hate you. I'm like, thank you. Is that supposed to be constructive criticism, Steve? Because I don't really know how to read between the lines in that one. But Steve wasn't trying to be mean. He wasn't trying to be funny. He was just laying it out there saying, dude, if you don't change something, you're going to stay where you're at. And I just declared to the universe, no one will ever stop me my career is mine and I hope that all of us look at our career and our and our life and say no one will stop me from growing into what I can be and so I began to look for where did I learn how, learn how to suck with people and then I found the day I was 18 years old I sat down with my manager excuse me I sat down with my my uh, uh, academic advisor in college day one and my academic advisor looked at my test scores, looked up at me, and said, Mr. Dewar, do you realize that 99% of all the rest of the freshmen enrolled are placed above you? And I'm like, oh, thanks. And then she goes, oh, but wait, there's more. <laughs> uh, people of your academic stature don't usually last six weeks at this university. Are you sure you wouldn't rather go to a junior college and make sure that college is your cup of tea and all I could think was wow <laughs> I've never been called an idiot so proficiently in all my life I'll tell you what I'll send you an invitation to my graduation think about that folks how many of you if somebody insulted you like that you'd set out to prove them wrong I did I set out to prove her wrong I studied 17 hours a day seven days a week for the next two years the end of my sophomore year I had achieved a grand Total GPA of 1.99. And my dean said, welcome to second semester scholastic probation, Mr. Dewar. If you don't pull it out next semester, you're going home. You know, that summer I had to figure out how to learn how to process information and remember things better. And I found a tool and I, uh, I integrated that next semester from 199, 325, one semester. Never had to worry about my grades again. Came out of school. But I had a hot button. When I got my BS, I had a hot button of I never wanted to be called an idiot ever again. And so I began to keep studying and studying, learn how to process information faster, remember more. And I became an educated idiot. And that was where I learned to suck with people. But as I began to learn that there's a difference, there's a I have to find the right information out there. There's three things to make it take anyone's career through the stratosphere, in my opinion. One is the right information. The second is the ability to process and remember it. And the third is take action. When you have the opportunity, take action. Because information with implementation creates transformation. So as I began to grow and change, I had I got to a point within about six months where Steve said, hey, whatever you're doing, keep doing it, and we need to do a management. But one of the biggest stumbling blocks I had to cross was the day that I found that teaching was an internal motivational gift, which didn't make a lot of sense to me. And my first thought was I'm not smart enough to teach. 99% of all the rest of the fresh were placed above me. And what's so sad is I was 40 years old when I saw that. 40 years old, 22 years, I've been believing the lie. But you know what I found? There's a secret to this. You take a limiting belief like that, and you confront it with the truth. And it eliminates the hot button of feeling like you never want to be called an idiot. And when I confronted it with the truth, I've learned how to process information faster. I've learned how to remember what I want. 
maybe I'm not so stupid. And I just opened the door and said, if this is in me, let's see what happens. And within six months from then, I started teaching a 3D event on how to process pain rather than run from it because I had been through a great deal of pain, a great deal of breaking. And at one point, in one of these, I'm hoping to go ahead and show you this is how you process pain. But today, I want to show you the keys to looking at how to find that internal motivational gift. So the strength-based leadership model is really based on something that is ancient. But what I want to first do is give you a little test. And let's walk you through the test, because that's all that it took. It's a little short test. It's probably seven questions long. Here it is. What's your internal gift? Now, I'm going to split this into two pieces. You've got your how to work with your hands. Would you rather work with your hands or speak with your mouth? Now, if you're one of those people that like to work with their hands, we're going to go with them first. And you're just going to ask yourself if you fit in one of these seven pieces. Just pick one. You can only pick one, no more than that. Not on this first one. Okay? It's do you respond more to people's practical needs? In fact, I'll do it like this. Do you respond more to people's practical needs or how people feel? If you're a feeler, so to speak, if that's what you respond to, you put your initials or you put down number one, number one. If you're still with me on the other side, though, you respond to people's practical needs, would you rather help them, help someone by doing something for them or giving them money? If it's doing something, it's three, you'd write down. If it's giving money, you put four. Now look at the speaker side of things. Um, to form an opinion about something, would you probably go by what you feel or, or believe already or research until you're confident? If it's research it, then you put number two down. If in giving advice, would you rather give practical steps of action or quote something as an absolute basis for, act, uh, for action, whether it be a um, spiritual reference or it would be uh, some some mm, index or something if it's that kind of thing where you're going to quote right wrong type stuff then you'd put number five and then down at the bottom if you're still with us do you find that you easily adapt adapt easily to any situation or you're frustrated with red tape and delay if it's you adapt number six if it's Frustrated, red tape, and delay, number seven. Now, what does this mean? Well, depending on where you answered as the, the one thing that you chose out of the two areas, what it looks like is this. Number one is mercy. Mercy is that high empathy person. You know, it's a gift that you always feel what everybody else feels. Wherever you, whenever you sit down at a park bench and somebody gets within 10 feet of you, they come over and start talking to you and telling your, their life story to you. You know, it's as if in some celestial realm you've got a neon light that says, please peek your life here. <laughs> um, you have that ability to feel what everybody feels. Many times these folks can be a little bit indecisive, but their superpower is that empathy. Now, when it comes now the next one, if you had number two, teaching. <clears throat> teaching is uh, someone that has the ability to pull together uh, lots of information and then put it, it put it out into the, the wor world as a systematic program. You tend to be one who loves to learn. You you have five six books going at once. Um, you love to bring information and to teach that information to talk about it. Whether you're in a formal setting or not, you tend to be one one of those people that just loves that. Many times you'll um, ignore the the uh, practical practical things like um, sometimes a teacher will know what to do, but they don't always do what they know to do. Hence that amazing elliptical in my house that holds my coat so well. Um, but the point is, is that a teacher is someone who hears the language patterns of others and listens to that and then formulates the way that he's describing the images in his head in a way that the other person can receive that information easier. Now, serving is someone who usually shows up early, stays late, and helps with the cleanup. 
in the office or in at a party. They're the ones that just are mercies with, with action, with feet. They do the things that are just invisible. They have great big hearts, and they love to, to express that. Givers, amazingly enough, givers are not necessarily the ones that pull all the money out of their pocket to give. They sow in others' lives in many ways. And here's the amazing thing. They have the ability to attract whatever you need, like in your organization or your company. And I've seen some amazing givers from in my life. One of the most amazing one was a lady that worked with me. And and uh, if it was a birthday in the house, so to speak, or in the in the the uh, office, well, she'd just walk around saying, hey, it's Joe's birthday, two bucks. She'd just hold her hand out there until you put two bucks in her hand. I mean, she had no qualms with it. But what I saw her do that was so amazing is that she really took uh, that gift, and one time she wanted to take, like, stuffed animals to one of those Christmas tree things. And on Monday, I talked to her, and she told me about the thing. The following Monday, I got to see her. I said, how many bears you raise, you collect? She says, 318 in five days. I mean, that's a freak of nature. Okay. Professing has to do with speaking the truth. These are the ones that will see the flaw in the plan, the error in the data, and everything is black or white, on or off, right or very wrong. And they just, that's the way they live their life. It's very cut and dry. They have no problem speaking the truth into a situation and saying, you really, that's going to break right there. And they'll probably tell you the date it's going to break on. And, uh, you know, they can be a little rougher around the edges in some areas. And I, 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 know, I know some people that are very good at this. <laughs> and they're very good at finding where something's going to break, where the inaccuracy is, where it's not right. And uh, so those are, you know, that's just their gift. But the best example of this that I ever saw was a guy who read millions of lines of code because he was a coder. You know, he, was an, he, he, he literally would, would find the errors in the code. And he did it at a DNA level and was awesome at it. So that's the kind of the intensity and in how these things are wired to our DNA. Exhortation is that person that is the high energy, um, uh, make friends easily, encourager, cheerleader, person that is always trying to get people up. They were are really big about saying something like this. If I can do it, you can do it. And there's this pulse of energy that, all, all, that flies out of them. And whoever is trying to say that they can't, they believe them. Chains break. That person gets up and says, I can do it. And they run through a wall for them. And the last thing is administration. Administration is someone who brings order to chaos. Um, they are kind of those people that like to, to tell you the truth, but they tell it to you in a, a way that is really direct. Um, they'd like that phrase, can't you handle the truth, you know? Uh, very high uh, uh, leader type, but they also, and this is their superpower, which is cool, they also have the ability to bring order to chaos. If they're in crisis, they can see what needs to happen, and they bring those things together, and they make it happen right away. And so every one of these are areas of us where when we're operating in mercy, teaching, serving, giving, professing, exhortation, or administration. We're operating in those gifts. We have the ability to continue to do that out, literally hour after hour. It just it feeds us. And so that's one of the things I just want to kind of throw that out there and get that going to get your mind stirred on these areas that where in my life, where in your life, do you have these gifts operating? And usually what I encourage you to do is just Try to identify the one. The test shows you the one. And then take it from there and begin to say, how can I begin to utilize it? Now, Scott, Ojinga, um, as you've listened to what we talked about so far, 
do you guys have any insights on what I was talking about and how you can apply it in um, business and leadership as well? I'd love to hear from you. You guys have been so kind to just let me have the floor for a bit. So um, either one of you who wants to talk first? I'll talk. I mean, I'm blown away by what it is you're showing me with these motivational gifts because when you look at um, I, I took the test and I know that exhortation is is a, the thing the thing for me but all one all of these gifts all can be used within your team and so if you can find a way to be able to identify your team and not just taking whether you're a red green blue or yellow or you know whale a dolphin or whatever as far as those different things with that but to be able to take it and use the gifts then now those people using their gifts within your teams now it takes you to that structure level that I like to get to. Um, I, I, I believe there's two different sides. I believe there's organizational structure and human capital. And what you're doing with this is amazing because now you allow someone to really control the human capital um, and be able to put it in the right direction so their structure can can, can prosper. And so um, it's it's amazing what it is you're doing there, Pat. Well, thank you. And 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 you're I, I, totally right. I mean. One of the things that I love to watch about you, and it's fun with Scott, the, a lot of times professors are high accuracy people, good with numbers. And it's always so fun to play with Scott, and, and he'll tell me something, and I'll say, oh, you, yeah, that was like, what, $86, right-ish? And he's like, no, it's $86.23. Okay. If that wants me to know exactly where he is, and he, and it's right or wrong, you know, it shows up, and I love that. You know, you're going to get the truth from Scott. It's going to be straight up, you know. And the one thing about you, Ojinga, is that I, I like we talked about. I watch you work with people, and that exhortation gift is like a spiritual bolt cutter. I mean, you break chains in other people' li people's lives. And they stand up and they breathe again and they live again. And, and then they got order that they got a system to follow. And so that's, that's really exciting. Scott, any insights that you see in, in how um, these things apply to some of the things that you do in marketing as well as business development and, and, well, the, and the accounting side? Well, yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, one of the, I mean, you're calling it uh, the, the seven motivational gifts. I've heard it called the archetypes, the personality types. The fact of the matter is once you unlock your specific code, your superpower, once you recognize what your superpower is and you play to your strengths, that's when everything starts to explode because you're playing in your wheelhouse. You understand who you are. But now you're taking this to another level when we start to recognize the people who are working on our team, the teams that we're building. So now we build a team that understands who each of us are on the playing team, right? I like sports, so baseball, right? If you had nine first basemen, that team is not going to do well. They might be nine great first basemen, but it's not going to work. You have to have different people on your team. I'm, as you said, I'm very... I, I don't mean for it to happen. It just happens. When you're talking about numbers, my mind is always, that's what it is, and it has to be accurate or, or I just can't sleep at night. I know who I am, right? <clears throat> but if I'm dealing with somebody else on my team, if we had nine of me, that ain't going to work. It's hard to be a successful team. So now you're building an entire team, but the first, the first, the cornerstone is you've got to unlock your own superpower. You've got to know who you are so that you can stay in your wheelhouse because that's when we are the most productive. It's when we are the most achieving. It's when we can do the most with the least. And now you build a team around that. That doesn't mean that everybody has to be different. You you can bring somebody else who has some of your powers and some of the others, but these are powerful gifts to help any organization, any individual and any organization, but it has to start at the individual level because if you don't know who you are, how can you be successful in moving forward? And that's what I like about th this exercise. You broke something that's extremely complex that people would probably spend hours trying to figure out, and you brought it down to just a few questions and then, you know, just it's left or it's right, it's top or it's bottom, it's left or it's right, it's top or it's bottom, and then all of a sudden, boom, you, by, by processing the questions, you, you define what box you're in. Now, 
I do want to understand that many of us have more than one of these in us, but what you're coming down to is where our core is, where our main energy is, right? Because yeah, the thing that, yeah. that a lot of people see this and they go, yeah, I got a couple of those. I go, we all do. Yeah. You can develop all seven. But you know what? The biggest mistake that most of us make is we become a wandering generality rather than a, what's the other side, something specific, you know, a definite specific. In other words, what if we started with one of them and, and realized that in that one, we could touch so much more? And, and that was the thing with me is that, you know, I, I've been in, in, in sales most of my life since I got out of college and you know, I've done all these different things and, 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 I, and I've been around so many areas and whatever. The point was is that until I saw that teaching was an internal motivational gift, I knew I loved to learn. I'm a voracious learner. I mean, really voracious learner. Uh, anyways, lots of books, let's put it that way. And, uh, and I loved it. And I love it. But the thing was is that I'd never turned it around to giving it to somebody else. I might have done some little things with my kids when they were growing up and, you know, did different activities, but I didn't really like dive into it. But when I finally said, you know what, if this is in me, I mean, like I said, this stuff is not new. It's been around a long time, but a lot of times people don't even, you don't pick up these nine pound pearls that have been around for ages. We just leave them out there. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, but are you using it? Because the one thing that, that I saw in this is that when I started to operate in teaching, everything shifted. Now, when I started directing the 3D event that this is, this is actually used from, I was stunned at how powerful they were because I could run an entire three-day workshop with several trainers and a bunch of attendees, and all I needed to know about the trainer was their gift. And usually, I could read it really fast. But the thing is, is that once I knew their gift, I knew how to place them in the workshop together, you know, bundle them together in different groups and stuff. And I knew how to set them together to make the best outcome. And it always was amazing because here's the thing that is so exciting about even looking at this stuff. There's another level to this. Uh, a few years back, there was a couple of guys that got together and it was Bill Bright, Francis Schaefer, and Lauren Cunningham. And they all had been given an, an understanding that there were basically seven pillars, seven mountains that formed the, the foundation that, that changed a nation. And what was so amazing about this is that we began to see that the gifts high to the mountains. They lead straight into those areas. So mercy has a real, if they'll take that, that passion and they'll find an area in the family realm that, that can literally be something that you could touch a nation in. If you're a teacher, any form of education where you're actually letting that out of you and letting it grow. I watched myself go from just offering it at a, a small weekend type thing, and now I, I literally have touched all 50 states, uh, and it's been an amazing journey, uh, hundreds and hundreds of workshops all over the country, just like you guys have done, and it's that teacher aspect of us that's coming forward. And, and what's nice is, is that I know I can teach longer than people can listen. So um, education is the, is the key. Serving, arts and entertainment. <clears throat> you would think, how could that be? But one of the, the, the best leaders I've ever had the opportunity to mentor, he was a high service guy that wanted to create movies to touch the nation arts and entertainment. Very incredibly right brain, creative, uh, gifted person. And when they began to tie those things together, they're actually been able to do since uh, in the last four or five, six, eight years, I guess it's been 
uh, since I worked with this particular individual. I've seen him create like six books, multiple, multiple films, working on, you know, so many other areas. But arts and entertainment, it's where he can touch the nation. Giver, business. A lot of the best givers are great in business, too, because they understand that seed, time, and harvest. You've got to plant a good seed. You got to give it time to grow, and there's a time when it all comes back, and it comes back in in loads more. It's that business mind that doesn't get unraveled when the winter comes, because they know that they they they've got a a good uh, crop coming in in the spring, and then you've got professing media, which is interesting because. Scott, you're a big professor, and you know that. You're very accuracy-oriented. But what's so exciting is to see you create, you've created several things. That you, you created a book recently and a training course. Tell me about those real quick, because I, I would love for people to see how easily you've been able to take this gift and begin to create tools for others to begin to use as well. Well, um I know Pat, you know it, no Jinga knows it. My background is accounting. That's what I went to school for. That's what I'm formally educated in. Uh, I worked for a naval air defense contractor for 17 years. Then I broke out on my own <clears throat> and I started working for myself. And uh, I'm, I'm very good at the numbers, uh, but there was certain parts of the business aspect that I was missing. I was awesome at doing the bookkeeping, the accounting, and I wasn't so good at the marketing to begin with. And uh, you know the old saying that the the plumber's house needs plumbing, the the, sh the shoemaker's kids need need shoes. Well, I was really good at the accounting, but my house didn't have a budget, and <clears throat> I was doing so much of the stuff I was flying by the seat of my pants. And I got to meet a lot of other business owners that. They have the passion to do what they do. They love what they do. They got into doing what they do. And we, as a small business owner, as a sole proprietor, as an independent business owner, we hang our entire future on that dream of our life, our entrepreneurship. And when, when we aren't paying attention to it, if something goes wrong, the results can be catastrophic. And I'm not speaking of that from a uh, hypothetical. I mean, it happened to me. We, we did it and we lost everything. And I just remember think I, I was destroyed. I was mentally and physically destroyed because I thought, who would ever listen to an accountant that lost everything? I mean, if you, if you were a good accountant, that wouldn't have happened. Well, I can tell you, I was a great accountant. I just wasn't a great business owner. <clears throat> and then I meet business owners everywhere I go that they have the love and the passion and the desire to do what it is that they do, to serve other people, to help other people, but they don't know how to help themselves. So that's when I started to create some of these training courses that, look, you don't have to be an accountant to get your accounting right. There's tools out there. Let's learn how to use the tools. Let's recognize the mistakes. One of the books I wrote was Secrets to Business Success, 10 Mistakes Every Business Owner Makes and How to Fix Them, right? Because people don't even realize the mistake when they're looking at it. So once we can start to recognize it, then we can start to make the, make the changes. So some of the videos that I put out, some of the training courses I put out <clears throat> are really just so people can start to recognize where they are and where they want to be and help to develop that path from the mess to success. And it doesn't really have to be a mess. But it's to help them to continue to live their passion, to take their mind and, and take their life their dream and build the business into the reality that they always dreamed they'd have. That's why I do this stuff. That's awesome. So one quick question, Scott, your uh, QuickBooks course is on what site again? Uh, Teachable.com. It's uh, my, <clears throat> my dash QuickBooks dash expert dot teachable.com or you can just go to myquickbooksexpert.com and there's a link for it there as well. Either way, it gets you to Teachable and you can purchase the course. Uh, it's 40 videos broken down to two minutes to 10 minutes so that you can start to get the information you need right away. Today, business owners 
they don't have time to read that QuickBooks for Dummies, 400 pages. Nobody has time for that anymore. We are an instant feedback society, so what we built was a video system, two minutes to 10 minutes, so that you can get all the stuff you need, no fluff, it's direct, click-by-click, -click, step step-by-step instructions, so you can start to build the business that you desire. That's awesome. Thank you. Now, what's fun is that exhortation, uh, I, I really, it's funny because I see the word religion there because that was the mountain that they identified. But I don't like, I, I, it's having, having studied history too much and the, the real definition of religion actually goes back to the word bondage and chains. And, and I, I'm sorry to say that for those of you who don't be offended by that. I, I wish it said spirituality, which I'll probably change that in the future. Because someone that inspires others, that's the exhortation. That's what it really does. It sets people free. And, oh, Jing, I couldn't think of anybody else better than you to actually talk about how uh, are you beginning to touch the nation with the inspiration and and even the the uh, the, the the tools? I mean, you've got some workshop or uh, some conferences coming up. I know we're doing a conference here in well in the Dallas Fort Worth area in August second third. But you've got some other ones coming up this year, and these are things that you have committed to doing for the next several years is what I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the thing is, is that when I see religion, um, it doesn't necessarily, I mean, you look at it and you think of it and you're like, oh, I mean, what does that mean? How are you, you know, what, what are you doing with that? But honestly, the religious, the, the, anything that we are really committed to can feel like a religion. It's not meant to be sacrilegious in it. Um, but you're just totally committed to it. And so um, I always like to tell the story of the chicken and the pig, you know, that the chicken was not really committed to breakfast. It just pooped and uh, had the eggs, but the pig was fully committed to breakfast. It gave its life for it. Um, and so for me, I put my life into helping people and to, yes, I'm an, I'm an organizational structure person, but for me, it's about how that structure rolls into our lives and how it is that how necessary it is for us to have that structure and that energy and everything to be able to take it and be able to do it. And so um, I've, I'm, I live in Memphis now. I'm not originally from Memphis, but I've been bringing events to Memphis for the past year. We're making Memphis into a place where people are coming from across the country and they are coming in and learning things, learning great things there. And so I travel all the time and, and attend events, you know, and, and I've got a chance to, to teach in 49 of the 50 states, um, teach tens of thousands of business leaders across the country and what it is that, that we do. Um, but the thing I love is just getting the opportunity to be able to share with people. And so that's the reason why I'm so excited to be with you and meet Scott, you know, the things we're doing that we have coming up in Dallas. Um, we have an event in March that, that we were doing the I Dream My Chief Academy Live event, the Business Breakthrough uh, Blueprint event. Um, you know, it's, I, I just love being around creative people who bring that force and bring that energy um, into it and be, and, be able, and be able to do it. And so um, I'm just thankful to be around you guys, I'm thankful to get a chance to, to share with people and to be able to just push, like you said, if you can do it, you know, if I can do it, you can do it. That's that's the thing that's that's, that's been, a, been a part of me ever, even before I even knew um, as far as the seven gifts and what to do with that. Oh, I totally get There's one thing, though. You know, so often, Ojinga, you talk about the three C's. And and I know we're going to probably do, uh, you know, that's going to be something that we'll, we'll expand on, I believe. I we, You teach about it in, at most of your workshops. But could you give us a quick snippet? Because I want people to understand, you know, this exhortation, this inspiration, this bringing uh, change and transformation when you ins inspire comes from that I dream I achieve, that, that, uh, that uh, team crushing it, and, you know, all these different things that you come out and you're always telling people, man, just keep on going. 
Would you tell us about the three C's real quick? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when we talk about team crushing it, what we're doing is we're crushing those obstacles that are in front of our goals. And we're, we're, we're getting that faster than we ever thought that we were going to get there. And um, for me, my career as far as in business started um, as a manager and, and working with people, and I realized that there were some things that we needed to do to be able to be great in organizations, but I had no idea that those things were what we need to be doing to be great in life. And so those three C's are clarity, content, and consistency. And so if we can be clear about what our expectations are of our employees in a business, if the content can be legal, and the last C is the hardest C, we can be consistent in how we treat our employees, then we can be successful in our business. But that actually still fits for our life as well. So if you're clear about your direction and where you're going, if the content of what it is you're doing is something that you can do or that you can learn to do or that someone can help you do, and then you can be consistent in your actions, then you can do anything in this life. And um, we live in a, in a remarkable time now. Um, there were times where there were so many blocks that were in front of us as far as doing. Now we live in a time where you have a media center right there in your pocket with your phone, where you can go out and broadcast to the world and find your tribe and your people who connect with you, and where you can find other people who will be able to help you to get to, to the directions it is that you want to be able to get and do so. And so it just allows me to be able to stand up every day and know that it's, about to, it's time to go win a day. And so that's the thing. For those three seasons that have clarity, content, and consistency, when I can feel that, then I know that it's it's – it's my time. It's our time. It's your time to be able to get the things that you want to be able to get done and to be able to knock those things out. So I'm just so excited. That's great. Can it's, I add uh, on that real quick, though. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to ask Ojinga one thing, okay. and that's what's your best website? What? How can people connect to you real quick? Absolutely. They can connect to me at ojingacar.com. It's O-G-I-N-G-A-C-A-R-R dot com. Um, one thing that, that's great, if those of you that are on Facebook, we have a free group called the Dream Achievers Network. And so all you have to do is search on Facebook, Dream Achievers Network, and you can find us there. And we put in content in there for that. It's a growing group of people who are achieving their dreams. Because it's not just about sleeping and, and dreaming. It's about actually achieving. So you see that's a, um, um, a theme that goes through with everything we talk to. I dream, I achieve. It's about achieving those dreams. So the Dream Achievers Network is on Facebook as well, too. So get on there. Um, I'm on all the time, drop it in. Knowledge, we have great people come in and talk to that, that group as well, too. So it really is awesome. That's great. Scott, you had something. Yeah, because you were talking about the exhortation and religion, and if you listened to what Ajenga just said, right, because he talked about the tribe, like you hear David D. and Dan Kennedy, the herd, right? But the religion is, listen to what he was talking about, team crushing it. He's creating a cause, something bigger than himself, where we can shed the limiting beliefs of what we have, come together in an area to achieve a new higher purpose, a new higher uh you want to use the word religion or use the word religion, but that's what's being created. That's It's a movement. Exhortation is to create the movement, to create the, the, the place where things are safe and you can shed the limiting beliefs of what was and create a new, better thing. So that's why I, I do have a... a I do have my own Team Crushing It t-shirt. Just want you to know that. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that's what you're creating. You're creating a movement. And that's what Ajinga is doing. And that's why I love his I Dream I Achieve. I love the, the things that he's doing, the three Cs. It's all about creating a movement. And that's what the exhortation is. And he even said it in his description. And I was just sitting here very moved by it and couldn't control myself. So I'm done. Yay, yay. No, you're absolutely right. But, I mean, it's inspiration inspiration that's what in it's putting the spirit in motion it's that that's what that's about and i'm so excited about that and so it, it's neat to have people on the on the even the, the the webinar here where i'm going you see these gifts administration government is really leadership but it's how can i touch the nation I can become a better and better leader because the if you were to take, uh, you know, let's say we had seven trainers at the next uh, annual convention thing, you know, and uh, I I brought my ten year old grandson because he lives up there in St. Louis, so I take him up to uh, somewhere near there, and uh, we're all together, you know, on the in the table, and 
and we're having a really nice dinner and and uh, let's say we got you know someone that's a mercy someone that's a teacher someone that's a server someone's a giver someone a professor someone an exhortation and an administration there well my son drink you know my grandson drinks like three dr peppers before i can even stop him and of course what happens when you get that much sugar in a 10 year old pretty soon movement and 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 he spills his drink what happens well the mercy is going to come over and spill their drink with my grandson just to show him it's okay you know maybe give him a little hug the teacher is going to say well if you just set your drink over here you wouldn't have spilt it <clears throat> the the server is going to go grab some paper towels the giver is going to order another one the professor is going to say water only because that's what they would do and then the exhortation of course is, you know they're like it's okay you know and they get all excited and then the administrator well they're going to look around seeing all these gifts and they're going to you do this you do that you do <laughs> order to chaos it's amazing how these things show up and it, it just amazes me when you look at these different things there are ways that you can create a contract that in, includes these and it's an affirmation how do you begin to use and grow this gift within you? What is your calling? What do you want to do? What do you want to be? Who are you? Who are you becoming? How can you use your gifts to help others? Connect them to your purpose, your passion, your profession, to create a destiny. I just, I love this stuff. It's information with application plus repetition. Because we've got to train that inner unconscious beast. <laughs> Scott, you'll love that one, right? Um, that has to do with the five-sixths of our mind that is the unconscious. That creates transformation over as short a time period of 66 to 90 days if someone will just begin to tap in and nurture that. So one of the things that we want to do is always remember that whether you think you can or you think you can't, either way you're right. Great Henry Ford quote. And uh, what's funny is I look at this stuff and I think about how many managers have only seen the four gifts. And they call them communication styles or personality styles. And I say, you know, there's, there's actually seven. There's so much further you can go with this. And most people don't even use this very well. What they do, Scott, Ojinga, as you guys know, they look at this task versus people, quiet versus talkative. It's ancient stuff. Whether you use sanguine, choleric, melancholy, uh, um, uh, what is it? Sanguine, choleric, melancholy, phlegmatic are the four oldest ones. DISC, Driver Influence Service Competency, they're about 50 years old. Um, e and T S F J M O U S E for the Myers Briggs fans in the house. Thinker, director, socializer, relator, whatever. Animals, colors, I mean, it just goes on and on. But almost everybody, when they look at this and when they learn this, what they do is they see what they are and they want everyone else in the world to speak their language. You know, that reminds me when I was in in um, corporate America, my manager came up to me one day and he says, hey, Pat, how are things going? <laughs> well, I'm a storyteller, so I went into my story. <laughs> and he said, stop. And I only need an RDCV. I said, what's an RDCV? He goes, Reader's Digest Condensed Version. I only need the bullets. And I love to ask people, did this manager build or shred rapport with me in that moment? He shredded it. You know what, though? I have been learning some stuff. So the next meeting I had with them, I pulled out my three by five card. And I went bullet one, bullet two, bullet three, Steve, we're done. You know what his response? That was sweet. 18 seconds. Make all of our meetings last that long or less. Because I built rapport with him. I spoke his language. Well, speaking his language is one thing. But when we go into strength-based leadership, what we're really trying to do is notice the strengths in our team and saying, what if we could develop a systematic coaching, mentoring program
for each of those gifts to where people begin to thrive in the workplace. That's what strength-based leadership is really about. That's what I'm really excited about this year as Ojinga and I and Scott and I create these different things together. Uh, I know I'm going to be uh, with Ojinga a couple of times this year, right, at your different conferences in Memphis, and we've got the one in Dallas, and really excited about that. Uh, Scott and Ojinga and I are creating the one in, in on August 2nd and 3rd in North Lushen Hills in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. You got to get to that if you're if you haven't been if you haven't planned to be in it, you know. Make sure you connect to me. My uh, email is Patrick at D O E R the way you pronounce my last name D O E R Success dot com. So it's Patrick at Doer Success dot com. Email me so that I make sure or you can connect with either either one of uh, either Scott or Ojinga through their websites. Uh, get more information. Keep in touch with us. This information is something. I'm putting out there to try to give people some real tools and insights how they can plug into their core, plug into their power, and begin to create their destiny. Thank you so very much all for listening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Ojinga. It's been a great time tonight. Look forward to spending more time with you guys.